Lesson 3.3 Area Models and Partial Products for Two-Digit Factors. We can use area models and partial products to multiply two-digit factors. We can draw an area model to find the partial products and then add the partial products to find the final answer. For this lesson, we'll be using color pencils or crayons and grid paper or plain paper to draw our models. And we will break apart each factor into smaller rectangles or arrays, which will be a form of the distributive property. And remember, the distributive property states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add end by the number and then adding the partial products. We have four times five, five would be our sum. The add ends would be three plus two. And four times five is equal to 20. We could do four times three, which is 12, and four times two, which is eight, and that equals 20. Multiplying the sum five by four is the same as multiplying three plus two times four. We can use a model to break apart factors and make them easier to multiply. We can model 15 times 16 on grid paper, then break apart each factor into smaller rectangles. We have 15 times 16. We break apart the 15 into a 10 plus 5. 10 plus 5. We break apart the 16 into a 10 plus 6. 10 plus 6. Now we have 10 times 10 and 10 times 6. We have 5 times 10 and 5 times 6 as our partial products. 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 6 is 60, 5 times 10 is 50, and 5 times 6 is 30. We add our partial products and we get 240. So 15 times 16 is equal to 240. We can draw our model of 15 times 16 differently by breaking it apart into different rectangles than we did before. We know it's equal to 240, but now when we break apart the 15 times 16, instead of 10 plus 5, we break it into an 8 plus 7. That's equal to 15. And for the 16, we break it into an 8 plus 8. That's equal to 16. Now we have 8 times 8. We have another 8 times 8. We have 7 times 8, and we have 7 times 8. And each re rectangle contains a partial product of 15 times 16. Our first model with factors of 10 was easier to multiply. It's always easier to use multiples of 10. We multiply 8 times 8 and get 64. We have another one. We have another 64. 7 times 8 is 56, and we have another 56. These are our partial products. We add them up and we get 240, just like we did before. So it doesn't matter how we break up factors because their partial products will always equal the same sum. Here we have 12 times 14. So for our array, we broke the 12 into a 10 plus 2 and the 14 into a 10 plus 4. So that means we have 10 times 10, which is 100, we have 10 times 4, which is 40. We have 2 times 10, which is 20. And 2 times 4, which is 8. We add our partial products and get 168. And we try breaking the 12 times 14 into a 6 plus 6, that's 12, and a 7 plus 7, that's 14. And we get 6 times 7 plus 6 times 7 plus 6 times 7 plus 6 times 7. Look at that. We have 42 plus 42 plus 42 plus 42, and that also equals 168. So it doesn't matter how we break up factors because their partial products will always equal the same sum. And we need to use parentheses to group our multiplication, so we know to do them first and separately, then add our partial products. If we don't use parentheses and solve from left to right, we'll get a different answer. For 12 times 14, just going from left to right, we would start with 10 times 10, which is 100, and then we would add that 10. That would give us 110. 
then we would have to multiply that times four, and we would just keep going from left to right, we would end up with 17,688. And we saw that 12 times 14 is equal to 168. So use parentheses, multiply within the parentheses first, find those partial products, then add all the partial products together to get your final answer. Here we have 15 times 17. We broke the 15 into a 10 plus 5 and the 17 into a 10 plus 7. We have to be careful and make sure to use the correct factors and partial products for each rectangle. This would be 10 times 10. This would be 10 times 7. This would be 5 times 10 and this would be 5 times 7 we would have a 100, a 70, a 50, and a 35 for our partial products. And it's easier to break apart factors into multiples of 10 because we can quickly multiply basic facts and add the amount of zeros in the factors to the partial products. So remember, multiples of 10 are like 10, 20, 30, 40. If we had 6 times 27, it's easier to break it into a 6 times 20 plus a 6 times 7. 6 times 20, we have basic facts of 6 times 2, which is 12. We have a 0 in the factor, so we put a 0 in the product. That's 120. 6 times 7 is 42. We add 120 plus 42. We get 162. Multiples of 10 make it easy to do mental math. We can make rectangles on plain paper to represent factors that are broken apart, so you don't need grid paper. We have 22 times 43. We break the 22 into a 20 plus a 2. We break the 43 into a 40 plus a 3. So we have our multiples of 10 here, don't we? We have 20 times 40. That's 800. We have 20 times 3. That's equal to 60. We have 2 times 40. That's equal to 80. And we have 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. We have four partial products. We add our four partial products, that means we're going to have four add-ends. We're going to have 946. 22 times 43 is equal to 946. So we have to make sure we have the same number of partial products as we do add-ends. You don't want to miss one of the partial products. Modeling partial products can help us find the products of greater numbers by helping us do mental math. We have 52 times 39. We break the 52 into a 50 plus a 2. We break the 39 into a 30 plus a 9. Here we have 50 times 30. We can think of it as basic facts of 5 times 3, which is 15. We have two zeros in the factor, so we have two zeros in the product. We have 1,500. Now we have 50 times 9. We can think of 5 times 9, which is 45, and there's a zero in the factor, so we have a zero in the product, we have 450. Then we have 2 times 30, which is equal to 60. We have 2 times 3, which is a 6. We have one zero in the factor, so we have one zero in the product, we have 60. Then we have 2 times 9, which is 18. We add our partial products and get 2,028. The partial products really helped us do mental math, didn't it? When we multiply a two-digit factor by a one-digit factor, we'll have two partial products. We have 15 times 2. We have a two-digit and a one-digit factor. The 15 is broken into a 10 plus a 5, and the 2 is just a 2. We have 10 times 2, which is 20, and 5 times 2, which is 10. We have two partial products. When we multiply a two-digit factor by a two-digit factor, we will have four partial products. Here we have 15 times 21. We broke the 15 into a 10 plus 5 and the 21 into a 20 plus 1. We have 10 times 20, which is 200, 10 times 1, which is 10, 5 times 20, which is 100, and a 5 times 1, which is 5. We have four partial products. In our next lesson, 3.4, we're going to multiply with place value and partial products to multiply two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers. 
I hope I'll see you there. Have a wonderful day. Bye.